Hello, this is Heisenberg with the history of King Kong. I'm going to list and review all the King Kong movies and also some closely related films. First, the original, King Kong, released in 1933. This is one of the greatest movies ever made. And actually, it's arguably the best movie ever because of the outstanding action and adventure. It's got a great story, a great musical score, and great characters, particularly Kong himself. In the movie, King Kong lives on the mysterious Skull Island with many other giant monsters, including dinosaurs. And Kong gets into several wrestling-style fights with some of the monsters and dinosaurs. It's a must-see for any fan of action and adventure movies. Willis O'Brien did the stop-motion special effects. Now, stop-motion animation is where you move an object one frame at a time by hand in order to make it appear as though it's moving on its own. O'Brien animated Kong and the many monsters who uh, fight Kong. Now Kong is a full-fledged character in himself with personality and emotion and not just a special effect. Regarding the rest of the cast, the leading lady is uh, portrayed by the stunning and wonderful Faye Ray and the actor Robert Armstrong plays the main antagonist to Kong. The movie also has an outstanding musical score by Max Steiner. The movie has other excellent effects, such as the portrayal of Skull Island, where Kong lives, and it has many iconic scenes, including the climax, where Kong climbs the Empire State Building in New York. Now, the movie's out on Blu-ray and DVD. In 2010, it was first released on Blu-ray as a digibook, which just means that it comes with a small book of photos. This uh, 2010 digibook is out of print, but sells on eBay for about $18. In 2017, the Blu-ray was re-released uh, without the book and sells for about $15. And also in 2017, the movie was re-released on DVD, and the DVD also includes the sequel, Son of Kong, which we'll talk about shortly. Now, a closely related movie is The Most Dangerous Game, released in 1932. The makers of King Kong, minus Willis O'Brien, also made The Most Dangerous Game at the same time. So it has a lot of the same island sets. Uh, the actors Fay Ray and Robert Armstrong are in the movie, and it has the same composer, Max Steiner. There are no monsters, but it's still a good action and suspense movie, and fans of uh, the original King Kong uh, should check it out. Now this is out on Blu-ray and DVD. The DVD is from the Criterion Collection. It was released in 2001 and sells for about $18. And it's also on Blu-ray from Flickr Alley. This Blu-ray came out in 2012, sells for about $29. Now the next movie is Son of Kong, also released in 1933. Because of the success of King Kong, a very short sequel was quickly made and released uh, by the same filmmakers, including the special effects by Willis O'Brien. So Robert Armstrong in the movie returns to Skull Island and meets the young son of Kong. Uh, unfortunately, Fay Ray is not in this sequel. And also the sequel is very modest and has very few special effects. Uh, there's just a few uh, monster fights. So this is mostly for uh, dedicated fans of uh, King Kong. You know, for you know, for those fans, it's nice to watch, but there's uh, you know, not much. There's not much to the movie. It was you know made you know very quickly. It's out on Blu-ray and DVD. The Blu-ray came out in 2015 and sells for twenty dollars, and in 2017 it was re-released on DVD, uh, along with uh, King Kong, and that sells for thirteen dollars. Now the next film of interest is Mighty Joe Young, released in 1949. This is from the same people that made King Kong in 1933, including Willis O'Brien supervising the special effects. It's not as thrilling or exciting as King Kong, but it's a good lighthearted action and, and adventure movie. Uh, Joe, who's a uh, gorilla, you know, not as big as King Kong, but a big gorilla, you know, again, is a real character with uh, personality and emotion. While Willis O'Brien supervised the special effects, it was a young man named Ray Harryhausen who did the stop-motion animation. As a boy, Ray Harryhausen had seen King Kong back in 1933, and that inspired him to become a special effects artist. Ray Harryhausen would go on to make many excellent films, 
including Earth vs. the Flying Saucers in 1956, and Jason and the Argonauts in 1963. So Mighty Joe Young is out on Blu-ray and DVD. It came out on Blu-ray in 2015, and that sells for about $14. King Kong was released not only in the U.S., but around the world, including Japan. It was also re-released in theaters several times, including a re-release in Japan in 1952. Both, both of these releases in Japan were uh, very popular. The successful 1952 release of King Kong in Japan helped inspire the Japanese movie studio Toho to make its own giant monster movie, Gojira, released in 1954. Gojira is better known in the U.S. under the name Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Like Ray Harryhausen, seeing King Kong inspired Age Subadaya to become a special effects artist, and he became the special effects director for the 1954 Godzilla movie. Now, the next King Kong movie is King Kong vs. Godzilla, released in 1962. This is the third Godzilla movie, and it brought King Kong and Godzilla together. This movie is from the makers of the original 1954 Godzilla, including special effects director Age Subadaya. Now, one would hope that a fight between King Kong and Godzilla would be very exciting, but the film is disappointing compared to the original King Kong especially if you look at the uh, King Kong suit. So in this movie, King Kong is uh, portrayed using a uh, man in a suit rather than stop motion. Still, the miniatures are extremely good, and the climactic fight between King Kong and Godzilla is, is pretty good. So this movie is out on Blu-ray and DVD. The 2014 Blu-ray has the uh, dubbed American version of the movie and sells for about $9. So then, the next King Kong movie is King Kong Escapes, released in 1967, again from the makers of the uh, Zilla movies, including special effects director Age Subadaya. So this time, the, uh, the suit actor uh, playing King Kong is Haru Nakajima, who played Godzilla in the Godzilla movies. The movie features King Kong, Mechanicon, a robotic version of King Kong, and Gorosaurus, a giant dinosaur. So this movie is similar to King Kong vs. Godzilla, the 1962 movie. Uh, once again, it has excellent miniatures and some good monster fights. So I, I'd say it's a good movie for Godzilla fans, but lacks uh, you know very broad appeal. So this is also out on Blu-ray and DVD. The 2014 Blu-ray has the dubbed American version of the movie and sells for about $8. Now another movie of related interest, not a King Kong movie, but similar, is Conga, released in 1961. This is a British movie about a giant gorilla and uses a man in a suit to portray the gorilla, Conga. It's a well-made, low-budget monster movie with a mad scientist. Michael Gao plays the mad scientist. He would later play Alfred in the 1990s Batman movies. Also in the movie is starlet Claire Gordon, and she looks gorgeous and has, you know, all too small a role in the movie. You know, I wish she had a bigger part. The movie has minimal special effects, unfortunately. During the climax of the movie, Conga does little more than just walk around. But for its low budget, it's a well-made and entertaining B-movie. Now, the next King Kong movie was released in 1976, this is a big-budget remake of the original 1933 film. It takes place in 1976, so Kong climbs the World Trade Center towers in New York rather than the Empire State Building. It stars Jessica Lange in her first film role. To portray Kong, they used a man in a suit and mechanical masks. It's a good movie, but in almost every way, this movie is not nearly as good as the original 1933 film. The script is not as good, the action is not as good, the direction is not as good, the soundtrack is not as good, and so forth. A huge disappointment is that Kong does not fight other monsters. There are no dinosaurs or other monsters on the island. Uh, Kong does briefly fight one monster, but it's not well done. Now Jessica Lange does a good job, and she looks gorgeous. You see a lot of her. She's got a lot of screen time. 
I remember when this movie came out in 1976, and they released a number of promotional drawings for the movie. And the drawings are actually much more exciting than the movie itself. Now, it's out on Blu-ray in Japan, and out on DVD in the U.S. The Japan Blu-ray will play in the U.S., and you might find it for sale on eBay. The cinematography for the movie does look very good, and as I said, Jessica Lange looks gorgeous. So these are both reasons why you might want to get the Blu-ray for the movie. Now, ten years after the 1976 film King Kong, they made a sequel, King Kong Lives, released in 1986. So this has King Kong in it, and also a female Kong, and they're being pursued by a small group of soldiers in a forest. It also stars uh, Linda Hamilton, who would later star in the Terminator movies. The movie got very negative reviews. Roger Ebert called it boring. It was a box office flop. And true enough, it is terribly boring and repetitive. It's like watching grass grow over and over again. Only completists who want to watch absolutely every King Kong movie or absolutely every Linda Hamilton movie should watch this film. Linda Hamilton actually does a very good job in the movie. This movie is not out on Blu-ray, but it was released on DVD in 2004 and sells for about $14. Speaking of female Kongs, back in 1976, Queen Kong came out. This is a very silly British comedy spoof of the original King Kong movie. It's actually funny and clever at times. It reverses the genders. It has a female Kong, a female cast, and one male character, Ray Fay, who is uh, taken by uh, Queen Kong. It's very low budget with very little special effects in action, though Kong does fight a very low budget dinosaur. The movie uses a suit to portray Kong and has a few miniatures. Kong climbs Big Ben at the climax of the movie, this being a British film. The cast of women are very attractive. Most appear to be models. One in particular also appeared in two James Bond films. Again, for such a low-budget and silly movie, it's surprisingly entertaining, at least in the first act. The second and third acts are more slow and tedious. So this is not out on Blu-ray, but it was released on DVD in 2003 and sells for about $10. Another movie that came out at the same time as the 1976 King Kong film is the 3D movie Ape. This was a Korean and U.S. co-production. It uses a man in a suit to play Kong, and as I said, it's in 3D. Yeah, the film features a lot of objects being thrown at the audience, like rocks. It had a budget of $23,000 and was shot in 14 days, but the film's just garbage. To me, it looks like it was shot in two days by a bunch of untrained amateurs. It's an excellent example of horrible filmmaking. It's clearly, by far, the worst of all King Kong-type movies. Some people find it campy and amusing, it's so bad, but I primarily just find it bad. I wouldn't have mentioned it at all, but it just came out on Blu-ray, and the Blu-ray disc has both the 3D version and the 2D version, and sells for about $20. It was also released on DVD in 2001, but that's now out of print. Getting back to King Kong, the next King Kong film was released in 2005. This is a very big budget remake of the original 1933 film. It's made by Peter Jackson after he made the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Peter Jackson saw the original 1933 King Kong film as a boy. It was his favorite film and the main reason he became a filmmaker. In the film, Kong is played by Andy Serkis using motion capture effects. Circus also played Gollum in The Lord of the Rings and would go on to play Caesar in the new Planet of the Ape films. This is a good movie overall and a faithful remake of the original 1933 film, but it's not as good as the original. The action in the 1933 film has few edits, whereas the 2005 film has extremely fast edits, making it very difficult to see. Also, Kong, in the 2005 film, looks and acts very much like a gorilla, whereas in the 1933 film, he's more of a humanoid character. In the 1933 film, he's also more playful, whereas in 2005, he's more despondent and angry. Also, Skull Island, in the 1933 film, is a you know thrilling and adventurous place, 
but in 2005, it's just too dangerous, and it's more of an island of horrors. Also, the 2005 cast is disappointing. Naomi Watts lacks Faye Ray's appeal, and Jack Black is unconvincing. So this movie is available on Blu-ray and DVD. It was re-released in 2017, and there are also many earlier releases. Next, we have the 2017 Kong Skull Island. But first, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It'll help me make more and even better videos. Please subscribe now. Thank you. Kong Skull Island is a great King Kong movie and a great giant monster movie. It does have giant monster fights that are very well done. The monsters wrestle, and the edits are not too fast, so the audience can see the fight. I would say it's more fun than Peter Jackson's 2005 King Kong movie, but the two movies are very different. Overall, this is a very welcome addition to the King Kong movies, especially because of the uh, giant monster fights. The next King Kong movie will be Godzilla vs. Kong, coming out in 2020. This will be a sequel to the 2017 Kong Skull Island, and also to the 2019 Godzilla King of Monsters. Godzilla vs. Kong will reunite the two monsters since their 1962 Toho film. The planned release date is May 29th, 2020. I hope this turns out to be the epic battle that I always wished for as a kid. So we have seen the original King Kong film has been highly influential, inspiring, for example, the makers of the Godzilla films, special effects master Ray Harryhausen, and Lord of the Rings filmmaker Peter Jackson. I'm excited that King Kong films are still being made and hope they continue to inspire great filmmaking. This is Heisenberg, hoping you enjoy your King Kong movies.